situation yeah. here. I could start my own company. I could do 350K okay. in, in, you know, in sales. Yeah. I could take majority of that profit. What does Student Works provide that I don't? Well, what do you know about running a painting business? I could find out. I could do my <laughs> own research. <laughs> Two for us, episode 51, take one. <laughs> Let's go. Yep. Let's go. One more time. Now nah, you're, you're, you're good. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the number one podcast in Winnipeg, aka Two for Rise, where we document the rise and stardom of Winnipeg's talent and personalities. If you enjoyed our 50th episode, thank you so much. Go hit the subscribe button. Give us some love. You know, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, and I'll help. This is our sign. Um, you know, which we uh they didn't show you guys in episode 50, right? Yeah, we didn't show them at all. But the reason it's here is because I actually painted this. It was our first original sign. And so, Speed. yeah, it's, yeah, we just paint, I painted it, you know. This is the one I painted. But we got a better one now. Speaking of painting, let's bring on our guests for today. They've been in the painting industry for a while now and have built a six-figure painting business with Students Works Painting. Here to talk about what they do, please welcome Jenny and Angie. <laughs> well, welcome oh, to the Tool for Eyes podcast, guys. Thanks so much for being here. I know you guys have to take a drive out here, but we appreciate you guys coming. No problem. Yeah, no worries. Before we start, why don't you guys give yourself an intro about who you guys are and where you, how you All guys. All right. Uh, my name is Jenny Stroh. Um, I'm a student at the U of M, entering my third year doing an economics degree. Um, and what I do is I run a student works painting franchise. So I started last year in 2020. Um, I finished up my first year. Basically, I kind of just run it during the off season of school. So four months. Mm -hmm. um, I wrapped up my first year with doing $92,000 in sales. And then as I returned this year in 2021, um, I did it again for the summer off season there and I did $151,000 in sales. So in the last two years, kind of wrapping up kind of under $250,000 in sales. Let's go. No big deal, right? It's oh, just, no, just, no just big light deal. numbers, <laughs> like nothing too big. Oh yeah. And then, yeah, Angie. Um, hi, my name is Angie. I'm a district manager actually here yeah. in Manitoba and I also work in Northern Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. um, I have been with the company for the past five years. This is my sixth year starting with the company. I run my own franchise for about four years. So uh, in my fourth year, I actually was able to district manage Jenny. Um, I recruited her down from the bottom <laughs> and brought her on. And we've been really good friends, ultimately my best friend uh, ever since. Damn. And um, now I'm working with, this past year, I worked with about 18 uh, franchisees or business owners, mm -hmm. both in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Okay, Damn. so for so for the viewers that don't know what Student Works Painting is, how would you describe what it is? It's always very funny to explain it because if you really think about it, it's a weird concept. <laughs> um, ultimately, it's a like a summer management program typically dedicated for university students just because we work with a lot of university students, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But ultimately what StudentWorks does is we teach university students how to go and run a business. And the business that we get them to run is a painting business just because there's lots of demand for it. And it is actually something that's really easily teachable. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, you know, if, if we all hung around for a weekend and I went and trained you guys how to paint, yeah. you probably would be pretty good painters by the end of the weekend. So uh, that's kind of why we do it. But ultimately, StudentWorks has been around since the uh, early 1990s. Mm -hmm. We started out in Vancouver and Alberta. And then we expanded towards Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and we've kind of been growing ever since. Damn. So just to clarify, you guys paint houses. Yes. Not, yeah, uh, not, not the, the painting paintings. that I was doing. Much more large scale and overall, right? Paintings, buildings, condos, stuff like that. Exactly. And it's funny that you say that just because I was, I'm currently in the process of uh, recruiting. So I am doing a lot of info sessions, and someone in an info session was like, so like, how do I like find clients that want to buy paintings? And I'm like, honey, like we don't paint paintings. Yeah, like, trying to be an artist. Yeah, so. like I don't know about you, but like I can paint the window frame. I cannot paint a Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So are you are you teaching them in your workshops? Right. Let's say like someone's interested and they're jumping on to student works. What does that process look like for you? Are you teaching them how to run the business side of things, or are you teaching them how to do the labor side of things? 
both. Uh, it really is both. It's it's about a seven to eight month program, depending on when you kind of start mm -hmm. and when you want to finish. But ultimately, what we do is we find a like what currently we're in a recruiting season, some from September till December. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what I do, if any areas so that we do have available in Manitoba and Sask in Northern Saskatchewan, I'm ultimately just currently looking for people to fill those areas. Uh, we are looking for the best people, though. So like, we're <laughs> not just gonna take someone off the street, but we go and like take the best people and then we get started by getting their business licensing done and marketing materials with their faces and names on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we get all of that done over the course of like December, early January. And in January, what we do is we have a three day seminar training. So we all typically go and there's two seminar trainings, one in Vancouver and one in Calgary. Mm -hmm. uh, typically people from Alberta, Manitoba and Saskatchewan all go to the Calgary location. Yeah. And so we have a like a three day seminar in, uh, to talk about like marketing and how to market and different ways of marketing, mm -hmm. uh, how to hold interviews. So lots of, you know, about recruiting and how to recruit for your employees, sales, how to do estimates, how to do um, different aspects of sales, you know, anywhere from first initial call to the client to closing the job at the time of the estimate. So we go over a lot of information mainly during that seminar about the mm -hmm. building of the business. Yeah. Uh, we do go over production, which is more of like that painting aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. But we do go over mainly all the actual like business aspect of it during that time. And then over the course from January all the way till end of April, we continue building on that. So we do a lot of practices. We do a lot of uh, feedback as well. So every single franchisee is actually assigned a district manager or like a personal business coach. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I work with 18 people, but each person ultimately is assigned a district manager or a business coach who's they can go, always go and call in case mm -hmm. they have any questions if they in case they want extra training. Yeah, yeah. So they are provided with that extra support at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also do like smaller groups training. So we do like paint training where we teach them about paint because they ha actually need to know about paint to be yeah. able to sell it. And then kind of like, you know, talk to them about like marketing and teach them how to do marketing, door to door marketing, like mm -hmm. uh, doing cold calling. And then we go in April, typically we have a more of a hands on painting training. Yeah. So we do like an actual paint training, typically over the course of a weekend where franchisees come in and potentially with their painters actually learn how to physically paint. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do a production training uh, slash spring training for us yeah, okay. um, where we go over like, you know, what is production? What do you need to get ready? How do you need to be organized? What your typical day is looking like? Mm -hmm. um, and then once uh, the summer kind of hits, um, I myself go and I visit every single franchisee, especially the new ones, kind of are my, my top priority, especially in the early months. Yep. Uh, and I actually go and start production with them. So in the first time they ever go and have to paint a house, just to make sure they don't mess up, mm -hmm. I no. go with yeah, them yeah. and I kind of help them run the production aspect of it. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think what's cool is because we got both of you guys. Mm -hmm. So you're more of the district manager. You are owning multiple or not owning but managing multiple people whereas jenny you're a day-to-day -day kind of person right yeah, i'm the person she's describing she's, yeah you're <laughs> the person who does all of that so yeah. what is this dynamic like um i mean i really appreciate having a business coach especially as a first-time business owner because it's very hands-on like i remember my first time doing estimates like if I would have gone there alone, I'd be like, what the heck am I doing, you know? <laughs> and then she kind of like took me step by step on everything. And same with um, going house knocking, the marketing aspect, um, doing the first calls with clients and all that stuff. So um, it's it helps a lot when you have somebody who knows what they're doing, teaching you how to do it properly, mm -hmm. um, just to help with building up your success and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, starting up a business by yourself, like one of the hardest things you can do, yeah. even they're running this podcast, right? Like it's, if we didn't have the team there backing us up, we don't know where we would be. Mm -hmm. So what was that process like for you starting like first year? I mean, $95,000, right? Close, close. So 92 is in sales. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I rounded it up a little bit. You know? Yeah. But still like that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. That's... How did you do that? Um, with Angie's help. Um, and I guess the, the community behind student works painting too. Like if I know that if I were to do it alone, I'd probably fail miserably. Um, but having the support, you know, all the trainings that we do, it really did help. And just like preparing myself for what's to come, like by either educating myself on like reading like business books or something like that, you know, um, learning better habits and just kind of following a schedule and like listening to the advice that's given to me. Um, it really helps with um, kind of preparing yourself for running a business, and I then, guess. And then how did you, how did Angie, how did you get started? Like, 
you're you've been doing this for four or five years now you're correct? running the show now come on yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, so were you in her position when you started oh yeah yeah oh yeah um i think we actually started both in the same position we were both in just university uh sitting in class because that's when classes used to be in person yeah <laughs> and uh i signed a clipboard and i think jenny you signed a clipboard as well yeah, yeah. And we ultimately just both signed the clipboard. Did you guys we ever sign the clipboard? I, I actually signed the clipboard as well. Oh, <laughs> no. yes. oh Everyone signs God. the clipboard. I Everyone did. does. Just no one shows up to the info sessions. I, I went to the info session. I oh, was did there. you? Yeah. We, I, just we'll stopped, I just stopped yeah. at the, the point. I went to the info session. Like, I'm not a business guy. Like, yeah. this, I'm a science guy at heart. Like, so for me, it wasn't the best choice. But I did go. I was curious. I was like, let's see what it's about. But, yeah, that's how I got to know, like, student works painting as well. Awesome. And when I... When I met Jenny in marketing class, I was like, "Oh, student works painting. I've heard of that before." So that's yeah. how that's how that came about. But yeah, fun fact: I did sign a clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like everyone, the, the joke is that everyone signs a clipboard. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people don't read. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they lost that skill on their way from uh, <laughs> you, you know elementary school to university. Uh -huh. uh, but a lot of people just don't read the clipboard and just sign it, and then I call them up, being like, "Hey, like you signed a clipboard. Like you said you were interested. And like I have." No idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And if I pick pique their interest over the phone, mm -hmm. they show up or uh, they don't, you they know? Don't, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was right. a lot of a uh, lot of sitting alone and watching Netflix Aww. for thirty minutes <laughs> during my first year just because it was a lot of info sessions and not a lot of people showing up. Oh no. Yeah. So so what is that like for you then? Like people sign up, right? Yeah. How do you pick the right person you no know, we we do a lot of background checks so like we go and look through people's like resumes and there's a long application process like it's about four weeks for people to even get to an interview mm -hmm. so we have like first info sessions like 30 minutes second info session which is like 45 minutes to an hour we really go and lay everything down on the table of what their opportunity is going to look like um and then we ultimately give send out a what would be like a franchisee contract and a disclosure document so they know exactly again everything they're signing on and then if they go into an interview and we like them we would offer them a job but the biggest thing is that this is technically like it's funny enough to say this like it feels like an entry-level position sure. um well you don't need experience in business you don't need to be a business student either you know mm -hmm. It's very funny that Jenny and I both are in economics students, but, you know, we work with a lot of people who are in science and then who are in engineering. Uh, lots of our top performers actually, you know, go and do other things than business. Mm -hmm. Lots of pre-med students, you know, lots of pre-law students. Sure. Um, but in regards to finding the best person is, I like to say that I hire based on personality. Okay. Um, not as a resume just because ultimately how well people like ultimately do it's not really about how well they know business and how well they understand business mm -hmm. although that's a big part of it is how well can i connect with that person yeah. right just because if me and the person butt heads all through the seven it's eight months there, it's just not gonna mm -hmm. work they're not gonna want to go and do extremely well and push themselves just because they're not gonna want to do it either. Like, you know, they're not gonna have that respect for me or they might just not care that much just mm. because there's lack that commit connection. Sure. And that's something that I've really tried to go and build with a lot of people Yeah. super early on. Um, and that's actually how I think Jenny actually does very well as well. I think she's gonna be the new future <laughs> Manitoba DM. Let's go. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Promotions right here. On yeah. Spot on, on sign the deal. Sign the deal. <laughs> Where's my contract? <laughs> we interrupt this episode to bring you today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more. Anyone can join the millions of members in the community to learn cutting edge skills, network with peers, and for new opportunities. If you'd like to support our show and are interested in Skillshare, click the first affiliate link in our description to get a 14-day free trial on us. It's easy, quick, and you can cancel it anytime. Now back to the episode. Jenny's loving this. Wow, right thanks, Ange. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jenny, from your point of view, you signed a clipboard, I assume. Yes. And then so... What was that process like meeting her and starting your first house or something like that? Yeah, so I signed the clipboard in my Stats 1000 class. I saw those digits on there, how much profit you can make. I was like, <laughs> sign me up. Money, babe. <laughs> and then I missed like probably 10 phone calls from her. And then I was like, oh, let me just return them maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to my first info session. Like as like a young person, I always knew that maybe in the future I was like interested in business. That's kind of what I was more drawn to. 
um, career-wise too. So I was like, why not give this a shot, you know? So I went to the first info session. I was like, hmm, this sounds interesting. There's another one, it's free too. So I was like, might as well like learn more, whatever. Um, so I went back to my second one. I was like, damn, like I kind of want to do this. Um, and I really liked Ange too and like the way that she like approached everything and kind of talked about everything. And then she didn't apply. <laughs> the Let's deadline hear this was story. Like, Let's hear this story. The deadline was like <laughs> October. The, <laughs> the deadline was October 1st, 2019. Okay. And I was like, damn, like I guess I didn't apply to this. I didn't hand in my resume. I didn't sign up for whatever else was required. It's been a while. Um, and I was like, dang, I guess it's just not meant to be. Like, I shouldn't be running my business. That's kind of <laughs> my thought process. And then I was walking down, like, the tunnels in the university. I get this phone call. It's from Ange. And she's like, Jenny, um, I know you missed the deadline to apply, but, like, I really think that you would be a great franchisee. I think this would be really great for you and all that stuff. I was like, okay, I guess I'll sign up for this. <laughs> like, she called me back. She thinks I'd be a great fit. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll give it another shot. I signed up. And I did my interview with, like, the vice president of the company, and then he offered me the job, and I was like, dang, okay, I guess I'll sign on. Um, and then we just kind of, it was kind of a dead season, I guess, like from, because I signed on like in October, I believe, and then November, December, like nothing really happens. We kind of met a lot of the other franchisees just to get to know each other a bit more, like anybody else that's doing this in Manitoba, which was cool as well, because then you know, like you're not alone, you're not the only one doing this. Um, and then training started, I was like kind of overwhelmed, I guess, because there's a lot of information, and then... Um, as you get back from Calgary, you just start doing it. So everything, the first time I ever did anything was with Ange. So it's like I never do anything alone to begin with. Um, but that was pretty cool. And then as school ended and you have to start like producing, um, I never painted a house in my life. So I was like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, how am I supposed to train other people to paint when I don't know how to paint myself? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that was also... Um, kind of always a little bit difficult with interviewing. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to paint houses. Like, <laughs> it's okay. I've never painted either. <laughs> but, um, just kidding. Um, it's very professional. Yeah. Um, I have to hire the best people too, you know, so build up my name in my community. Um, but then the first day was very nerve wracking, I guess, because I'm like, this is like real now. Like I'm talking to the clients. I'm like painting their house. I'm training my painters how to paint. But again, Ange was there. So I had a lot of support behind that. Um, and then after my first day, like, I was very well prepared. Like, I read all the emails. I read all um, the manuals. I was very well prepared with, like, equipment-wise and knowledge-wise. And now I just had to go do it. Um, and then that was kind of the nervous, nerve-wracking part, I guess. But after I did it, um, I never went back down. Like, I just kept rising. That's <laughs> so, good. That's what they hear. Two um, rise. Just Love keep that. doing what she taught me. And then the summer went pretty smoothly. You know, like, had some couple bumps on the way. But you just have to kind of handle or deal with what comes your way and then do professionally too because you are running a business. You don't want to like ruin your reputation or damage your name. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, yeah. It makes sense. You guys are running a full business like we've mentioned thousands of times <laughs> through this podcast. Yeah. And so, um, Ange, when you're, when you're finding, once you found the person and then once, is there a list of things that you supply to uh, the worker or... Yeah. Uh, in this case as Jenny, like wh how much guidance are you actually providing and how much of it is, and when do you let go of the reins? It's a 24 <laughs> hour service here. <laughs> I like to say it's a 12 hour service okay. with uh, some overtime. That's for sure. I should charge for that. Sure. Um, it's okay. They pay me with love and affection. Nice. Uh, that pays not always appreciated. Starbucks. not going to lie. <laughs> Um, so ultimately every single business owner is required to go and, um, there, there's going to be things that they're going to do and there's things that student works provide. So every business owner is going to be, you know, in charge of recruiting their own staff. You, you, we ultimately, and I make this really good point. It's like, I would hate to go and like hire people for other people yeah. and then have them not like each other. Yeah. Right. You want to work with people who you enjoy working with. So a lot of people go and hire their own staff. Uh, then you get a market your own business. Again, you want to go and get that experience of marketing and what ultimately it takes to go and build your sales and build your business. And then, of course, clients. You also don't want to work with clients who are just given to you. You, you want to make sure that you connect with your clients as well. So you pick your own clients. And then, of course, you're going to have the production aspect of it. Um, funny enough, just to explain this, uh, when we run our painting businesses, like we don't necessarily do a lot of painting. That's why we also hire our own staff, but we do have to train them. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, there's just not enough hours in the day to go and do both. Yeah. Um, if you guys ever want to go and kind of 
read a really good book that kind of explains how a business owner cannot be the ultimately the labor as well. Uh, the Emeth Contractors are actually have really good book, or the Emeth in general. Those are both really good books to kind of explain that process. And that's something that we really base our systems a lot on. Okay. And then we do, of course, have our business owners take care of the administrative aspect of it. So everything that you ever do is ultimately needs to have a system to it, right? Like there's a certain way of doing marketing. There's different ways of doing it. So ultimately over the past 30 years that we have been in business, we have ultimately accumulated a lot of in information and knowledge on how to run a successful painting business. So that's all put in a form of systems that systems is not necessarily just a book that we give to our franchisees it's yes the it's a holy bible it's a holy bible <laughs> 130 pages worth of it Duh. um preach <laughs> <laughs> double-sided <laughs> uh so it's systems in regards to that we train them off those systems uh but there's also additional like emails and uh, I'm a huge advocate of trying to provide my franchisees with as much information, as much help as possible. So there's also like typically me sending out more emails with more information that they can go and use to go and benefit themselves. But it's the business coach aspect of it. Sure. It's the aspect of having someone to call 12 hours a day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whether you have a question or you made a mistake to have them go and help you. Mm -hmm. And the nicest thing about StudentWorks is that although you have your one-on-one -on -one district manager that you're assigned to, mm -hmm. there are 11 other ones you can always reach out to. So going from admin, you get your first, you know, you sign your life away. You sign, <laughs> you, you, you sign the contract, you you're the getting buy. ready to pay. Mm -hmm. What's that first day look like for you from your perspective, right? Like you're, this is your first time you never painted a house in your life. Now you're going teaching people how to paint. You've, got a, you've built a team, you've hired on people. What's that first day look like for you? That first day was, um, well, my first day, I had, a, <laughs> I had a painter just leave at lunchtime and never came back. So nice. um, she ignored all my phone calls. I was like, what the heck? Um, but it was also cold, but maybe she was just picky. I don't know. <laughs> um, first day was very nerve wracking. Like I didn't sleep at all because I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, but I had window trim. So that's like the easiest job to start with, you know, um, I tried to, well, Ange kind of took over because I just didn't know how to do it, right? I just had to sit there and observe and kind of, but also like with my painters, I had to kind of be the person to that they know that like, oh, you can trust me. I'm your boss. Like, don't treat me as like someone below you because I don't really know how to paint. But I think I'm mastered my painting skills now pretty good. Um, <laughs> but the first day is just like more hands on like taking your painter, showing them how to scrape a window, how to prep a window, and then how to paint it. Um, and then when it comes to the client part of it, um, we say kind of good morning in the morning, just kind of confirming what we are doing. Um, and then they leave, and then we do our thing. And then when we're done, we talk to them again, show them our work, and then if they're satisfied, um, we kind of go through the paperwork of like just the final payment left, their warranty, and then their check. Uh, wait, their signature and getting a check from them too. Um, but That's what you're there for, you're getting the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's just pay and leave. That's yeah. how it goes. <laughs> hey, you, we got another sponsor. If you've ever considered building a website, you've probably definitely heard of Squarespace. Squarespace is a website designer that allows you to create your website from scratch using a wide range of templates to fit your needs. Whether you're creating a portfolio, small business, e-commerce, Squarespace got it all. Check out the affiliate link in our description and start building your website today. You'll be helping out the show as well as creating a killer website to impress your peers. Now back to the episode. When So there's probably a lot. So you said there's 12 district managers, but I'm sure there's a lot of business owners as well. About 150 to 160. Okay. So my question is, is there competition between you guys? Are you guys fighting, fighting for clients? No. So the way that StudentWorks does it is each franchisee, so each business owner is divided up by postal codes. Oh, um, okay. So that's how we kind of keep our, in our own like district, I guess, to not interfere with other people or other competition. Mm -hmm. um, the only time you can really get clients from other people's areas is if they are like a referral, like your aunt lives there or businesses, if you do decide to do commercial work and then you can kind of free range it wherever you can get some work. Mm -hmm. Um, but for like house knocking, flyer dropping, all that stuff, you stay within your area. But, but you're there to make money though. Like if, if you're made, if you're there to make money, the why not, why not spread out? <laughs> Every <laughs> area has the same potential basically. So it's up to you to know how much money you kind of want to make. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's all like divided kind of up 
also like the way that we divide up the postal codes is like by how much income each area kind of has the type of house if it's like renting or owned if it's like condos or more commercial or residential you know um so everybody has the same amount of potential it's just up to you to determine what you want to finish up with or how much you want to do so and but it's also like it also depends like how much work you put in right yeah if you don't put in a lot of work you're not gonna get a lot of clients at the end of the day right 100 percent, yeah so then you, you happen to do very well during your summers, but I want to know, are there people on the other end of the spectrum? Oh, yeah. And do they lose money as well? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, most people who do this don't lose money. Okay. And the reason for that is is just because we don't hire people who we don't think are going to do well. Um, that being said, uh, if someone, if we do end up hiring someone, and it's there is po- always potential about losing money. Okay. Every single business always has. Yeah. Uh, that being said, just because student works provides such a big safety net, okay. you don't lose hundreds or tw- tens of thousands of dollars. Sure. You maybe lose like a grand because okay. you went and you quit super early on. Mm-hmm. No one who makes it to production season lose money. Okay. So typically people who go and quit a lot earlier on are yeah. the ones who would do that. Sure. But there's a very low percentage of people like over the course of the five years I've been around, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of people who go and again do this who would lose money just because we wouldn't hire them. Sure. Um, that being said, like Jenny said, you know, each area has a lot of potential. You know, each area can have anywhere from like 300 to half a million dollars worth of potential in each area. There's lots and lots and lots of work to go around. Mm-hmm. And that's also why a lot of people stay within their district. That being said, we're also so limited on time that you want to go and stay in your own district and you want to hit your clients over and over again, over and over again. In the past, in 2017 and 2018, the franchisee in this area wasn't necessarily good. She was, you know, quite lazy. Uh, They didn't want to put in time. They didn't want to put in the effort. The uh, the area that she was working in was Transcona, uh, Elmwood, uh, River East, and East St. Paul. So over course of her summer uh, in this area, she did about $50,000 in sales. Um, by the way, no matter what kind of year you were in, $50,000 is actually not that much. (laughs) Um, nothing. It's light work, light work. (laughs) So it really, it really is light work. And that's the reason why I say that is just because with two painters over the course of the summer, an average franchisee can go and produce about $94,000. Okay. Now, um, for the past three years, we actually had an amazing franchisee here from Steinbeck. And he, in the same area that this one girl did $50,000, both in her first and second year, mm-hmm. um, he did, I think he's going to do like 350 this year alone. Okay. So it really comes down to the person, not the actual area. Yeah. And that's kind of why we do it the way we do it. And that's, but revenue. That's, that's revenue, correct? Yes, right revenue, okay. revenue. Uh, profit, we, I guess we can kind of get onto that as well. Sure. An average profit within the company uh, last year was what, 27%. Okay. Um, this year, just because we're still not done with the year, we don't necessarily know, but we're probably mm-hmm. expecting uh, about the 28 to 30 mm-hmm. range just because we have seen, again, tremendous growth. Yeah. You know, as well. this, this question might be like a little on the edge here, but you say your profit margins are 28%, right? About yeah. this year. Yeah, depending on for, the franchisee. For someone looking into this, right? For example, me. Yeah. I could start my own painting company. Oh, you go right ahead. Right? I could. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. That's, that's a joke. It's okay. I, I'm just like putting out a situation yeah. here. I could start my own company. I could do 350K okay. in, in, the, you know, in sales. Yeah. I could take majority of that profit. What does Student Works provide that I don't? Well, what do you know about running a painting business? I could find out. I could do my own <laughs> research. You know what so, I mean? No, I'm, I was just I saying. Like, I know, I know. So that, that's the biggest thing, right? So a lot of people think they can go and do this on their own. Mm-hmm. Trust me, a lot of people can't do this on their own. Sure. <laughs> um, and that's also why StudentWorks is so great in comparison to a lot of people who want to do this on their own because, like, we teach people good habits. We go and, like, really provide a lot of help. And when that issue arises... Let's say the friend, the pay, uh, the client no longer trusts you, like, yeah. right? Like, they just might not pay you, and that can also be an issue. So, with student works, you do again have that safety net that if the client loses trust in you, now they can go and reach out to myself, their head office, and I can go and help run through the uh, through the projects. So ultimately, you get paid. 
Uh, a lot of the things that a lot of business owners, and by the way, my dad is a contractor. Uh, my dad ran about $40,000 business every single year that I wasn't uh, in for student works. And it's funny enough that he also told me not to do this. Uh, Does he but work the, for you now? Hmm? Does he work for you now? <laughs> he doesn't work for me now. I have been offered a job, though, okay. um, several times. Sure. Um, I told them no because they can't match my pay from student works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you laugh, but it's really true. Yeah. Um, but my dad's business grew significantly after I joined Student Works. And it's not because um, he started doing so much better. It's just because he now I took on the coaching I got from my coach and from my VPs and from the lessons I learned from running my own business. And I taught him for free. Yeah. I mean, COVID hit and it hit hard for many business owners oh, yeah. and even, even small business owners, right? How did it affect you from an admin point and you as a true business owner working the front lines who should go first i'll definitely go first because it's very ironic and this is kind of again where i'm like it sounds i i make this joke all the time i used to not be such a big advocate for student works um but i'm literally in love with this company um and it's just through the tremendous growth and support we've been given and a lot of business owners failed once COVID hit you know, yeah. we all went into lockdown for about three to four weeks yeah. and, you know, no one knew what to do. Mm. Student works, we took action. So over the time of the three weeks that we were all in lockdown, what we were able to do is we actually reached out to our safety company and we made a plan. We made a plan on how we're going to be producing work, what needs to be happening in regards to doing estimates, how we're going to be doing estimates. Um both in regards to, you know, younger people, so people over under the age of 60, and people who are older who are more prone to being, uh, you know, uh, more sick and getting worse if they were to catch COVID. So we have made different plans, as well as how production would work, work on a daily basis in regards to COVID. So we were able to actually reach out to the company and do that. Um, it actually worked out very well for us. We grew from ten thousand dollars, uh, ten million dollars to thirteen point five uh, in 2020. Sure. Um, a lot of people went and start saving their money because they knew they weren't traveling. You know, it did hit kind of the perfect time for us. Uh, March being typically a little bit more on a boosting area. So we did lo lose a lot of time within that month that typically we do a lot of sales and marketing because we couldn't do any of that. But we actually gone and went really back up in May and June and we continued booking work till July and August. And we had tremendous growth, uh, lots of adjustments. We transferred very quickly towards Zoom and online, um, which is, again, a lot of companies yeah. And uh, the estimates that we were doing uh, were a little bit different. Lots of people, you know, presenting things outside. We typically do it at the table. Or I had a uh, estimate that I did over Zoom. Sure. I or I guess FaceTime. I FaceTime a client who was older. She was in her eighties. Uh, she really struggled with the Zoom aspect of it. Not going to lie, mm -hmm. um, flipping of the camera was a big challenge. But, you know, we did inter uh, we did interviews over Zoom as well and lots of that. That's actually transitioned to 2021 as well. Uh, so we had tremendous growth within that year, but also lots of positive changes. We had more time to go and provide quality videos on training painters how to paint. Mm -hmm. You know, we invested a lot more time towards providing uh, different feedbacks, you know, uh, a lot more working on initial calls with the clients, a lot more work in regards to presentations and interviewing skills. How about you? This is my thought process. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pandemic hits. Oh my God, why did I do this? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I was pretty nervous, like three, losing three to four weeks of time is like rough, especially in prime time, like in my area, so Southern Steinbach area. Um, that's like when people decide they want to do painting, um, is when the snow melts and the sun is shining. Yeah. And I lost all that time. Um, and as a first year operator, I was like, oh my God, like, what am I supposed to do now? Like sit at home, like study. Um, but I tried my best. Like I still like posted ads to kind of prepare myself for when we do get back to normal, if that were to happen. Um, but then it's kind of like Ange said, as soon as like everything kind of opened up for us, like going to work and stuff like that, um, there was a lot of success in like um, like sales wise. So like finding work, booking work, um, like we all kind of booked at a higher percentage because people are like, 
we want to still get painting. And um, we did have like the odd people that, you know, like they lost their job, so they can't afford anything, even though they wanted to paint, um, which was like unfortunate for their family. But there were still like many people too that um, didn't go traveling that year because everything was kind of shut down and they had extra money. Um, so they decided, oh, let's do like house renos. And then lots of people still wanted to support students because they're like, oh, they need money for school. School is expensive. And I was like, yes, it's me. Hire me. <laughs> Perfect. I um, I so, yeah, that was like the really good part is like lots of people are very supportive and want students to paint their house. So uh, I guess like once things kind of started to open up a bit more, I was like more relaxed. And it's like, oh, yeah, this this will work out. So for that young entrepreneur yeah. that's willing and wants to get into the painting industry, from both perspectives, what are some tips that you guys can give to them? I guess the biggest tip, so like if you don't want to do student works, but you want to get into this industry or you want to go and get into a construction industry where you want to start your own thing, the biggest thing I would say is find help. <laughs> um, make sure that you do a lot and lot, lot of lots and lots of research. Um, be ready to fail. Um, there is you know, like any business, you're going to fall on your face many, many times before you actually see success. Um, but the biggest thing is if you are planning to go and start your own thing, you're going to have to learn how to do it first. So you can't just go and start decide to run a painting business without wanting, without wanting to become a painter, sure. especially if you want to do this on your own. And this is also kind of why a lot of people did do stutter works because they don't have to learn the painting that much. Yeah. Um, just because you need to learn and teach people how to go and do it as well. You need to make sure you look up, you know, lots of videos uh, on how to do it and the best ways of doing it. That being said, there's lots and lots of garbage on the internet as well. It's very hard to go and fine tune on what works and what doesn't without actually doing a lot of research, lots of business books, um, over the course of what we call the, again, off season, so some September to December is when a lot of our students who we work with do a lot of, you know, reading. A uh, few great books that I always recommend are just How to Win and Influence People. Great um, it is fantastic. I made Jenny read it. Um, made Jenny read it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, the E-Myth, again, it's a great one, but nothing will ever prepare you for what's to come. Of course. Because until you're ultimately, it's until you're down in the pits, mm -hmm. uh, you just can't. You just can't f figure it out. It's it's one of those things where like learn as you go, and really write down on what you're what you're doing and how you're learning. Any tips mm -hmm. you can give them? Any tips for young entrepreneurs is probably like discipline. You know, like you have to set time aside for your business and for your personal life as well. Um, and like setting goals too. Like I find setting goals for yourself that are like achievable um, really helps because then you have something to look forward to um, because if they're like unachievable, it's just a like disappointment after a disappointment. Um, so like to have a life and run a business and be successful, like kind of like setting that schedule so you can have like work-life balance and be, be like strict to it too. Like don't be like, oh, like, I'm at home, like, let me just do a couple phone calls. Like, no, then you'll always start to feel like you're always working, always working, but you don't really want to feel like that. So just nine to five, nine to 10, call people, 10 to 11, eat food, you know, 11 to 12, watch Netflix, and then everything will start flowing and then it'll be all good. I like that advice. Well, <laughs> like on that, that note, I think this is a perfect way to end off the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, viewing, listening, and tuning into our podcast. Uh, we're live every Tuesdays, 11.30 a.m. on UMFM radio station, 101.5 FM. And until next time, peace. Check them out. Check them out in the description. Check them out. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs>